Hey guys, in this quite honestly over the top video, you're going to learn how to create a 3D procedurally generated rock, and we're doing this all in Blender. Rightio, so we're in Blender. First, I'm going to select everything and then press X to delete. Next, press Shift A and add a UV sphere. Right click and select Shade Smooth and then press Tab to go into edit mode. And you can also switch modes from the drop down in the top left corner. Now I'm going to right click and subdivide a couple of times. This is going to add more geometry to my sphere. You can then tab out of edit mode and from the modifiers tab, go to add modifier and select displace. Let's start by adding a new texture. And we can edit this texture from the textures tab at the very bottom. First of all, let's change the type to clouds. And then if you play around with the size and depth, you can really define the shape of your rock. You can also tab back into edit mode and subdivide again to add more geometry and get more detail. Alternatively, you can go to the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier. And if you're an absolute lunatic, you can do both, crank up those levels and then get a real time preview of your PC melting. Let's move the subdivision above the displacement modifier because the order in which you apply these is important. And I can now crank up the strength of the displacement for the- Whoa, Jesus! Hello, sir. What seems to be the problem? Oh, the displacement. It just- Huh. Well, I suggest you be a bit more careful with those settings in the future, son. Next, you can click this icon to get a rendered preview. However, to actually see anything, we'll need to add an environment texture. And you'll see everything turn pink. Click open and then navigate to your HDRI. Mine are from HDRI Haven, they're free and there's a link in the video description. And you can see it wraps this HDRI around the entire scene. And then go to the render tab, let's turn on a few extra bells and whistles so we get a better final render. And if you'd like to hide the HDRI but have all of the benefits of it, navigate down to film and select transparent. Now this will still affect all of the objects in your scene, but the HDRI image won't appear in your viewport or in your render. Next, let's jump into the shading workspace. Let's select that fully rendered preview, add a new material, give this a name, we'll call it rock. So first of all, increase the roughness to one so the rock isn't reflective. And then from the base color, you can choose a color for your rock and you can even make it blue if you want to. But let's undo that because there's a better way to do this. Press shift A and then search for color. Select color ramp and we'll move this over here. Connect the color from the color ramp into the base color and you can now select the two swatches, the black and the white at either end and pick two different colors. So I've gone with the brown here and you can drag the swatches along the slider to adjust the midpoint. So I'm going to bring these in. Next, press Shift A and type noise. Select noise texture and connect the factor of this to the factor of the color ramp. And you'll see this creates more of a separation between those two colors and you can play around with your gradient slider until you get something you're happy with. And with regards to the rock, you can bump up the roughness and the detail and then play around with the scale. And you can see this is starting to look much more rock-like. A rock covered in snow. A snowy rock. And now we've got this all set up, I'm just going to take a moment to adjust the color of the rock. You can also click the plus icon just above the gradient slider to add more colors. And as you'll see in this example, I go with a lighter brown and this enables me to create much more interesting textures. Now for the next bit, select the noise texture, go to edit, down to preferences, go to add-ons, and then from the search in the top right corner, type node. Enable node wrangler, and then you can press Ctrl T and you'll see it adds the mapping and texture coordinate nodes all connected up and you can now adjust the location, rotation and scale of your texture. Now switch back to layout mode and just take a moment to appreciate the rock you've created. You could even give it a name if you like. I think I'll call mine the rock. And even though you've added the material, from the textures tab you can still go in and adjust the shape of your rock. And everything is still fully edit- oh no. Not again. Yeah, come on down. Let's go back to a normal rock. Right, where was I? Oh yeah, rock. So there we go, a 3D rock with a material that can be edited and used on future projects. And you can always go a step further and press Shift A, add a new plane, press S and scale this up. Go to the materials tab and select your rock material. Make sure your rock is sitting comfortably. Press Shift A, go down to light, select air uh, spotlight. Move the light up above the rock. 
and from the lights panel, increase the power. Okay, now you're just being sick. You don't need 100,000 watts. Again, adjust the position of the light, add a camera, add some camera tracking, a sick audio track, and you get something like this. Pretty cool, right? But what would happen if we took this even further? Well, I imagine you'd get something like this. I had way too much fun making that. And if you'd like to download the Blender file for that animation, it's linked below. And a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, Invato Elements, who helped me bring this animation to life with their extensive library of incredible music and sound effects, including visual effects like dust that are used for the impact of the rock. But they also do photos, illustrations, textures, brushes, icons, motion graphics, and there's thousands of new assets added every week. And all of this for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription, you get unlimited downloads and even a commercial license. So if that sounds cool, you can check it out with the link in the description. You can also subscribe for more videos like this, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.